Hey everybody, we're live. Uh, this is Adam Zambruski with Hospiamo. We are going to start today with a little bit of comedy from my... He is everything to me as it relates to uh, how he uh, lived his life and how uh, he brought comedy and humor. Um, well, I have so much to say about Norm MacDonald. Never met him. Man, he was on my bucket list to meet him just to shake hands and tell him how much uh, he meant to me since uh, the late eighties when he first, uh, when my brother and I first saw him. Um, hey Bob, it's me. <laughs> if anybody watches stand up comedy, you know what I'm talking about, but um, I'm starting today with a, a little bit of humor because I recently uploaded or uh, <clears throat> updated my LinkedIn this is LinkedIn Live, everybody. Hey. So I, I recently updated my LinkedIn profile to reflect that I graduated from the University of Bob Seeger. And uh, <laughs> I have received a certificate from my best friend in the entire world. And it's right here. So there's my bro. Hey, I'm uh, I'm I'm getting into a little bit of humor when we start. So, here's my uh, my graduation certificate from the University of Bob Seeger. <laughs> um, <laughs> you and Norm McDonald, you guys go way back. We go way back, and so that was given to me by my best friend in the whole world, my beautiful Beth. And so I am starting the episode today, bro, with the uh, the origin of this, which I think is um, maybe the best ever, the, the best, uh, maybe 10 seconds, uh, the best joke ever, which uh, they, they show in here. So I'm going to play it and I hope that uh, y'all can hear it. So here it is. A new study found that men with beards are more attractive than men without beards. More great work from the University of Bob Seeger. <laughs> <laughs> I never laugh if I don't do that. <laughs> what was the first oh one? Oh my it god! Was a little quiet. It was a little quiet before he said more from the University of Bob Seger. I didn't. I didn't hear the lead in. It was a little quiet. Okay, uh, it was a little quiet. So uh, the the joke goes like this, and so th this is the Norm McDonald, the the Norm Show, uh, his original one of the first podcasts ever, about ten plus years ago. He's since passed, and he's like a god to me, and so. Um, uh, th this, uh, <laughs> uh, he says, uh, and he's reading from a card. So he says, um, uh, th this just in, uh, men with beards are more attractive than men without beards. More great work from the university of Bob Seeger. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, and, uh, so. I have a beard, you don't. So, you know, yeah, it's it's go. proven, bro. There you go. It's proven. <laughs> proven. University of Bob Seeger. It's already proved it out. It's on the internet. They they make me all hot. His his humor brings me all hot. I get all red and uh, and happy. So because everyone's looking at you. You got the beard. <laughs> Beth uh Beth knows that this just wrecks me whenever I, I say I can't even tell the joke without breaking up laughing because I just think it's and and he shows because he, he actually is right. He never laughs at his own jokes. But this one that he read, he read hundreds on this uh, show. And he says, I, I never laugh at my own jokes, but that one is uh, good. And the guy that was um, the guy that he was inviting on there was from. Um, he's the one that does the great Nicolas Cage impression from. Um, uh, the Saturday Night Live. No. Uh, now, who's the actor from uh, what's the show? It's a um, Jim Carrey, the the great uh, the the Big Bang Theory. Oh, oh, um, his uh, name's Simon. The the, the he's he's yes, not like yes, the, the superstar, Howard. but Howard is the name of his character on the yeah, show. Yeah, Howard. Yeah, yeah. And so he he was the guest on this, and and he just lost it when when he uh, he read this. <laughs> More great work from the University of Bob Seeger. Um, 
so so the uh, you know there, there's a little bit of a, uh, a another reason why I, I brought this up because the um this is a bit of a stretch bro but it's a what you hear out there in the world right is not always the absolute truth and so uh and what you see and uh re regarding the hotel industry or even investing in a second home or your your first home or investing anything and in, uh, call it commercial real estate uh, or um, even your own home with residential real estate. And that is, you know, don't uh, don't take it for face value. And growing up as a, uh, you know, a front desk agent and then hotel general manager, the face value was mainly mostly revenue focused and then high level uh, expense control focused. And I was not really exposed very much to the significant impact numbers, which go below the profitability line, which are property insurance, property taxes, the, uh, the cash reserves or reserves for improvement. Um, and then, you know, how much do we actually pay uh, the lender? Is there a mortgage? What is amortization and depreciation? What is all this? Like, it's a common uh, concern and a common question from the operators in the field because they are accountable to the bottom line, but yet there's, and I'll show you. They don't you know. know ten, yeah, yeah. And um, and so, uh, you know, th this joke came to mind because uh, it, what, what I interpret Norm MacDonald for saying, which is a very common theme in his comedy, is... Um, uh, you can you can make fun of somebody. You can make fun of yourself. You can you can actually talk about the things that are uncomfortable. And but at the same time, what are we doing out there? Like you know, you you read that you know you read a, a research. Uh, uh, it's the same thing as saying like uh, potatoes are now the most healthy thing to eat. More great work from McDonald's. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And you know? there's all different opinions out there. There's all different things, right? So it's like, what matters for what you're trying to do? You're talking about managing the bottom line of a hotel. There's certain things that matter. A lot of the stuff that's out there doesn't matter, or it's not true, or it doesn't, you know what I mean? It's yeah, just, or it's not true, or maybe you don't understand it, and yeah. you're in charge of it. And so it's like a, a very weird thing. And so um, I often think of like, if you were given like a, one of those really flexible water balloons, you know, and, and you got it in your hand, and you're trying to like, you know, control it. Yeah. If you, uh, if, if you have like a, a brick, you can just hold on to it. And that means you understand all of it, at mm -hmm. least, you know, to 80% of it. But if you got this thing that you don't really understand, and it's a major thing specifically for this, you know, understanding the, the full P and L or profit and loss statement for any business. Yeah. Um, try to, uh, um, the idea is that the world out there that, of asset management and ownership of, of real estate. It's the, the, the information that is shared for the people that are holding that, right. It's, it's not always, uh, readily available. Mm -hmm. And, and so this, our, our podcast, our weekly conversation here is bringing in people from all walks of life, regular people, um, that have, uh, a diverse, uh, amount of experience. And so, um, I'll give a shout out to, uh, Chuck Cooper, um, who introduced me, who's a regular guest here, um, and uh, author of Unprecedented. I'll give you a shout out, Chuck. Uh, please visit Amazon and get uh, Chuck's book called Unprecedented. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, Chuck is a, a great human being. And he I, I, uh, I email him or I text him sometimes and I say, hey, I'm having a, you know, I got a question about property insurance or insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so quickly within minutes he's always like yep you should talk to him you know i uh you could talk offline you could talk privately you could talk confidential and and it's such a wonderful quick uh reference and so we have a lot of these friends right and so do you and so do yep. a lot of the other people that we have on our uh, on our weekly call so i had a chat with that person that chuck recommended and his name is justin littaker and justin i apologize if I mess up your last name, but it's L I T A K E R. Um, and man, he was just a wealth of information for the particular issue I was asking him about. But I also asked him, so uh, he's with 
Litaker or Litaker uh, <laughs> uh, insurance. Uh, look them up. They do all kinds of insurance. Yeah. And they are so great. So he has agreed to come on uh, to our show and talk about these things. Right. And so that right. um, and probably it's going to be next week, next Thursday or probably the Thursday after that. Um, and so this uh, this blob of thing that we try to understand in business, you know, he's going to help solidify it, you know, yeah. and uh, and I think that that's hopefully what we do every week is just help people feel more comfortable with the things that they might not be known about. We've uh, talked about demystifying the whole idea because at the end of the day, it's pretty simple. So, bro, I'm going to uh, jump in and share a um, so I developed a a non-specific template. Okay. So, uh, to, um, show a hotel valuation. Yeah. Hotel evaluation. Uh, th this particular one is, uh, the idea of, um, I'm going to try to keep it very high level, but the, the idea is like, Hey, um, we are looking to buy this piece of land and we want to yeah. build a, a hotel there. Yeah. So the, the question is, how many rooms uh, should we be looking at? Should we be doing 100 rooms or or 500 rooms or 600 rooms? And uh, what do you think the the average rate is going to be? Is it going to be $60 or is it going to be $250, right? So is it going to be in Las Vegas or is it going to be in, um, you know, uh, Columbia, South Carolina? Or is it going to be in Charleston? Or is it going to be up in Boston? Or is it going to be up in, uh, you know, Spokane, Washington? So um, there's a lot that goes yeah. into it, right? There, there is, the, the world will say, and that is the reality, there's a lot that goes into the, the understanding of, of what to do. But let's assume that somebody like me is hired by somebody like that to say, yeah. hey, I got, uh, how much should I afford? How, how much should I pay for this land? Yeah. And if I do, you know, should I call Hilton? Yeah. Should I should I do it on my own? Should yeah. I uh, should I create my own brand? And it's sort of the history after my cousin. It's sort of the history. It's really important to demystify how the hotel got there in the first place. How much is it worth? And then going forward, if you're going to manage the hotel, that's important to understand because then you're going to be managing to the P and L. So like demystifying all that, I think is really important, bro. Because nobody. Most people don't understand it, including the people managing. They may not understand your side of it that you're talking about now. And they just show up and the hotel's already there. Now they're managing to a P&L, which they don't fully understand. But they also don't know how it got there. And if they didn't hire somebody like you and, and they overbuilt or underbuilt, that's important to know too. Or they overpaid. And now they're working off something on their P&L that they shouldn't have paid for in the first place, but it's like there. So auditing that situation to demystify it like, like your word demystifying is really important right you need to know oh, i'm i'm gonna uh nickname you dr segway <laughs> because uh you just right. exactly what you just said is what what happens when the ownership here might make this decision but then what happens does anything happen a few years later when you're operating the hotel and you're like what are you talking about you you uh you know why did this number change yeah. So I'm going to share the uh, the spreadsheet a little bit, and 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 just for everyone listening and watching watching this, these are just numbers, okay? These are, uh, th this is not an actual project, you know, all that disclaimer type stuff. Um, it's made up for the purpose of education. And I'm uh yeah, exactly, and and I'm just going to show you how sensitive these numbers are, and so the the the. In your mindset, bro, and that is just what you just laid out. If you're uh, the manager of, you, you have goals and you're managing a property, and maybe you have to uh, bring in $5 million of revenue and a uh, million dollars worth to uh, the gross operating profit line, let's say, and then you're working on the budget. And this is a very real scenario. You're working on the budget for next year and you're thinking, all right, I got to bring in $5 million and this is how I'm going to do it. A uh, million dollars to the bottom line, and these are round numbers, right? Yeah. Um, and then the asset manager, the owner, says, "Like, listen, um, we agree with the five million, okay, and that that seems feasible. But you're going to have to uh, 
uh, you're going to have to bring 1.2 million to the bottom line this the, next year. Um, that's the target. Can you just work on it? And you're thinking like, and this happens all the time. What are you talking about? Two hundred thousand dollars is a, a major. Like you have to spend a lot of time to try to find ways yeah. to. It, if the five million dollars stays the same, where's it going to come from? Yeah. You have to cut expenses yeah. in order to get to one point two. Okay. Um, sometimes you're lucky and you're like, you know what? I found new revenue source. You know, I think that we can do five point two million. And now I can bring down 1.1, but I'm still tr struggling with the last 100,000 or something, right? right? Yeah. So uh, the, a lot of those decisions, when uh, when you're when you own a budget or you own the strategy for next year, a lot of those decisions, which I found the, I'll say the hard way, but you know yeah. I found in my experience that those decisions have been made years earlier, wow. right? And it's like. Um, and a lot of it has to do with those things that are below the line that we call it. So it's insurance and taxes, cash reserves and uh, capital expense that we might need to save in order to spend on the property next year or something like that. Um, yeah, what you're mortgage, talking about, bro, is really important for people to understand so they can better negotiate their position that they're in. Or if they're going to step into a new role at a new property, they want to know what you're about to share. Because then they can That's assess huge. it better and they can say, wow, these owners are, are greedy. They're trying to squeeze too much out. There's no way to get what they want, right? So it's there's a lot of knowledge that you're about to share that I feel is very relevant to the, the hotel uh, managers. Uh, so you, you just made the point of uh, if you're a new manager or if you're exploring the idea of working for a company, um, th these are good questions to ask. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I'm just going to show you very high level, bro. So th this is a hotel that, um, so put it in the mindset of, uh, we want to, um, you know, uh, the, the owner says, Hey, I want to build a hundred and, uh, I want to build a 200 room hotel and I want it to cost this and all this kind of stuff. And so yeah. the underwriting showed that 134 rooms based on this land cost starts to make sense. And so without going into too much detail, the equity IRR, it's an internal rate of return, right, is at 12.6%, which is fairly low for what an institutional investor might want. Okay. And the 1.7 here shows that if, uh, for example, if an investor puts in $100,000, uh, they can expect a 12.6 return year after year. Got it. Over what might be a seven or eight year hold period. And so, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, putting in $100,000, that $100,000 is gone. It's into the investment and you're getting a check for like $12,600 a year. Mm. Yep. Okay. Yep. About on average. Yep. And then when you sell it, you're going to get back $100,000 of your original investment plus 70000 And so all of that adds into about your internal rate of return, right? So- when this is presented to an owner to say, Hey, I think that you should buy this hotel, or I think that you should uh, purchase this piece of land and uh, you should build it. It's 134 rooms, right? You start to uh, the uh, 12 right here, 13, 14, 15, 20%, even higher. Sometimes they're like, Oh, this is a good opportunity. So yeah. I'm going to put in my money and I'm going to make this investment and I'm going to go sign a bank loan for millions of dollars, mm -hmm. right? And possibly sign some guarantee of personal recourse. So they're going to take on a lot of risk based on what I, as in like the, maybe the consultant is saying, like, you should do this, right? Yeah. Yep. So here's where it gets a little bit intricate, but I'm going to keep it very high level. So here's property taxes and insurance. Yeah. So if I'm presenting this as a, a hotel real estate consultant and I'm saying, I think you should do this. And based on my research, not from the University of Bob Seeger, but um, <laughs> based on my research, I have shown that your property taxes are going to be about a $150,000 a year and your uh, taxes, sorry, taxes and insurance. Yeah. Uh, property taxes are about 150 a year. <clears throat> and then uh, your property insurance is about one one fifty. Now, 
that's all uh, good. So I wrote that in, and then I wrote over here that they're going to increase by one point uh, by three percent every year. Yeah, and they're like, okay, that seems about right. Now, here's the thing, bro. What if I got that wrong? Right. So you see this twelve point six internal rate of return and the one point seven here. Yeah. And I haven't done a lot of the, you know practice on this, but I will tell you that it's sensitive. So let's say I'm wrong and it's now two hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. On both. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. That's a, for an investor. That's a major difference. So Amazing. going from twelve percent to nine percent. It's not just three percentage points. That's like a quarter. That's 25% less than what they, they were, were expecting. expecting. Yeah. And they're going to say, no, forget it. Right. Yeah. So right. the threshold for them, like if it's above that, yes. If it's below that, no, they could say yep. no. So the accuracy of these numbers is really important for investors, but also for managers. Because if you're managing the property, you don't know these things. So they fluctuate a lot. Then I'm guessing you're in trouble, too. Dr. Segway again. Okay, so let's say that happens, right? Let's say they say, hey, Adam, you told us it was going to be 150 on both the taxes and the insurance. You know, maybe it's not even anybody's fault. Maybe it's just the, the markets of the day, right? Yeah. Um, which does happen. Um, I do want to talk a little bit specifically uh, if Bruce Jordan uh, joins. Uh, Bruce uh, uh, said he might be able to pop in, and I'm going to ask him about his experience with managing multiple hotels with um, uh, as it relates to how to react when things like this happen. Right. So um, now the reality of it. All right. So let's, let's uh, I'm going to bring this down for a second. I'm going to stop screening. So sometimes I go very much into the weeds, right. Of, of like hotels specifically, but let me back up for a minute and let's go up to the clouds. Yeah. It's really the same thing as uh, the the example that I thought about was when we were kids or well, I guess now uh, watching The Price is Right. Yeah. So, all right, you get on The Price is Right and you're like, nice. And then you get the price. It's right. You win a new car. Oh, my God. This is so great. Well, what they don't tell you that I'd never thought of when I was young was like, now you have to pay for the insurance on that car. <laughs> and, and and it's yeah. a, uh, yeah, you're like, oh, what? You know? <laughs> yeah. Now you have a very expensive car with very high insurance, but maybe high gas, like low gas mileage, right? High gas prices. So high maintenance, right? Then high maintenance. You and could yep. have just, you could have just won a $5,000 a year expense, <laughs> right? Exactly. So what if you do win? What, what if you do buy a piece of real estate, even if you buy your home, right? So let's say you, um, the real estate uh, broker says, hey, you know, I'm, I'm moving to Charlotte. And and the broker says, yeah, you can get a $300,000 house. And you're like, okay, good. I got about $60,000 to put down. That's 20%. Do you think I can get a loan? Yes. Talk to this bank. And they all do this underwriting, the same underwriting that I just was uh, going under. Yep. The same underwriting that somebody uh, that owns a car or buys a car, right? Um, the, uh, the the idea is like, well, what if you go ahead and do that and you bring your family down to Charlotte and then they say, hmm, so it's still 300000 That's good. Uh, but we're going to need $70,000 down now because the insurance, you know, somebody messed up or whatever. The markets are changing and you know, we didn't know that this hurricane was going to hit Florida. And you're like, I'm in Charlotte. What does Florida matter? Like, well, yeah. it doesn't matter. We're going to need another $10,000. And you're like, what? Yeah, I can't do the house now. I don't have it. I can't do the house now. I got my family here. I'm in a hotel. Yeah. And so th things like this do happen yeah. quite often. And um, my uh, position every week, which, by the way, Michael Jordan Number 23. This is number uh, in uh, episode number 23, bro. 23. Um, the goat. The, the goat. goat. Um, the, the theme that we didn't know when we first started, right? But the theme for me has been like, hey, ordinary people, regular people doing things that are great, that move things forward. And there's always been this disconnect between the uh, what I call owners and operators, right? 
Um, and I think that we're doing a pretty good job at connecting those two worlds. Yep. You are in a world of uh, agile project management, software development, engineering. Yep. I'm in the world of like making hotel widgets, right? And and hotels and employment and uh, employees and employment issues and uh, high, uh, you know, frequency transactions and payments and stuff yep. like that. And, um, you know, the these are very real situations. And so I thought about this as a, um, you know, property, uh, commercial property insurance as a, a pretty cool, like, what is it like the third episode that we've been doing based on like, just looking at the hotel P and L because I will tell everyone out there, bro. And you can tell all of your clients and, and people that you interview and bring into the world of, of finding jobs and in agile management is that the hotel P and L is no different than anybody else. Like it's, it's, it's no different than your, your family, right? Yeah. Your, your top line revenue that you bring in, the hotel might bring in $5 million a year. Yeah. Well, your top line revenue for your family P and L is your salaries and yeah. your income and That's your it. investment, whatever it might be. Right. And then you have expenses and that has to do with your building or your home. You have employees, which yeah. might be your kids. I don't yeah. know. It might be just like you, you have to feed them, you have to clothe them and, give them uniforms and, yeah. you know, things like that. And so, yeah. um, and then you also have property, you have the things that really your kids are never going to know about until they're like, start to do it on their own property taxes. Yeah. You know, insurance, like what, what happens when things go wrong? So, yeah, yeah I don't know. Um, that adds up a lot, right? So there's a lot of, what you're pointing out is there's a lot of hidden numbers that most people aren't aware of. Because most people, you and I are talking on, on this show about a lot of things that people don't typically stop and talk about or think about. Therefore, it's a demystifying. I like that word a lot because there's a lot of hidden things that unless you're aware of them, they could bite you, right? They could get you. Like there's a lot of things like if you if you have your mortgage and you're there with your family and you're paying the bills and all of a sudden, you know, the um, electricity prices double, which could happen. You know, yep. if you have a high electricity heated home and all stuff like you're very dependent on electricity, electric cars, electric heat, electric stove. All of a sudden, you know, you could be spending an extra thousand, two thousand dollars a month. And that like blows out your whole budget. Blows right? it out. So you got to You got to be aware of the details. Right. And uh, let me uh, let me bring this up again. So, you know, in that example. Right. So let, let's say that it goes up from 150 to 200 on these. Right. Yeah. And, but, and let's say you own the hotel, yeah. let's say, you know, uh, it, and you operate it, right? You got a general manager, you got a management company, you got all that. And that change happens where it goes up by 50 or a hundred thousand dollars total. Yeah. Well, you know, the operator that's responsible for a budget, one option for them is to what? Increase revenue or lower expenses. Yep. Yeah. Or you better call some new insurance companies yeah. <laughs> to get some yeah. lower insurance, right? Yeah. So um, the reason why I made this so simple is not it, it for the operators out there. Uh, keep this in mind. Uh, I'll do a round number, bro. Uh, when you check into a hotel and then you leave the next day, yeah, it usually uh, takes about forty minutes for one housekeeper to go in there and uh, turn that room over, which is yeah. to take it from dirty to clean and yeah. get ready for the next person. Right. If you stay over, if you come in for two nights and you just ask them to, you know, tidy up your room, it only takes about 10 or 12 minutes, maybe. Yeah. So on average, uh, when somebody goes into budgeting for a hotel, this might seem shocking to a lot of people, but we only budget about 30 minutes per occupied room for a housekeeper to clean it. Per per day or per stay? So per occupied room. So on average, if a hotel sells 10,000 room nights or, you know, you stay over one night, that's one room night. Okay. So it's per room it's night. It's an average. What's that? Is it per room night then? Yeah, per uh yeah, per occupied room night that is paid for. So 
when it doesn't matter what if they pay five hundred dollars for the room or one dollar, it's still Got dirty it. and you still need to clean it. Or you're saying it's it's like because what I was getting at was a sort of a, a geeky thing. It's like, well, suppose I stayed at, at a hotel for five days in a row versus went there every Monday for five weeks in a row and just stayed one night. Is that the yeah. same with the way the numbers work? It's probably more expensive for the hotel, you know, to to do the five days, five stays versus five days in a row. You're exactly right. Yeah. So um, what you're talking about is a residence in. If yeah. you, which is an extended stay hotel. And on average, people stay for at least five days. Yeah. It's a much lower operational cost because you're not cleaning it every single day. And there's other things too. You're, you're also not uh, using just a little bit of that amenity shampoo bottle and then throwing it away. Right. You're exactly. using the whole bottle over five days and you only have to replenish one. And you're like, it is a, yeah. yeah. It, uh, that's why residence ends. Homewood Suites also, um, they are more profitable um, on the gross operating profit line uh, than the Courtyard Marriott's or the Hampton Inns, which are more transient. That's what we call it, transient. You come in and out, right? Your average length of stay might be one or two nights versus Residence Inn, which is um, like five nights. Yeah, that's so fascinating. So you're, you're, you're yeah. absolutely right. That's fascinating. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. and. Uh, because now, right now we are in what's called budgeting season, right? It's, it's when these operators are presenting their budgets for next year. And this is when that conversation happens. Like the asset manager or the owner says, I know that I need to get to, you know, this number here, uh, in this particular hotel. I know that I need to next year, let's say it's 2000, whatever, 2025, yeah, I know that my gross operating profit needs to get to over three million dollars. Yeah, right. At a thirty-eight point five, uh, thirty-eight point three percent of the revenue. You know, don't worry right now about the insurance and stuff like that. But they know that this drives all that. Yep. Now, what if uh, you know this was? Uh... Actually, let me turn this back. So I'm going to put it back to one hundred and fifty and one hundred and fifty. Sorry, one hundred and fifty. Yeah, I got to wrap up too. I got to wind it down. You got to wrap up, okay? But this so is... the, the long story short here, I'm going to go into these numbers here. So th this rooms department here, bro, is where the um, if you wanted to, you could say, well, I only want to spend twenty percent on rooms and cleaning rooms. Mm -hmm. Well, now my number just went up, and sorry. There you go. Now this number just went up. And now as an operator, basically what this is, uh, or essentially I will say, what this is saying is that it's it's a little bit too simple for an owner to say, listen, we're after having to spend another $100,000 in insurance. So can you go find another $100,000 in operational costs? It's mostly about 50 or 60% going to come from labor. Yeah. And it's a lot of times it's not really possible because they're already tight. And so that means like, hey, uh, housekeeping staff, uh, you no longer get 30 minutes per occupied room or to, to clean. I'm now going to goal you. And based on, you know, you keeping your job, you have to now do it for 24 minutes a room. Yeah. And, that's and it's like, it's bro, our, and, and, and we should do this sometime uh, anytime you want. We, we can go into a hotel room and I will challenge you to clean the entire room. It'll take you an hour and 45 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. And it'll take me probably an hour. Yeah. You know, these housekeepers do it because they're so good. Yeah. They have all their equipment. They have all their everything. And they've been doing it for so long. The fact that they're able to do it every 30 minutes is amazing. amazing. And so yeah. cutting that back to like 26 or 24, it's like, you know, asking someone to get shorter. Yeah. You know, it's or not. asking someone to get taller overnight. So, yeah. um, yeah, you got to get going. Yeah, I got to get going for my next uh, okay next commitment. But this is fascinating stuff. I think you should keep going for the for the uh, for the audience, uh, going a little bit more with some more scenarios because this is really if if I was a hotel operator, manager, or getting ready or an investor, this is like real deal. Like I need to know this stuff. Like it's now. the real deal, and you know th this is the idea that uh, I would uh, encourage all real estate investors if real estate investors and asset managers 
will tell the world that they know all of this. They know the numbers because I'm I'm one, right? Yeah. Yep. But I only know I know that I also know the reality of the field, yeah. right? And so um, everyone's just trying to do their job. But at the same time, the the best relationships and the uh, when things do go wrong, meaning, man, we screwed up the insurance costs. We're going to have to do this. Everything's going to be OK. Yeah. It, do, it doesn't mean anybody won or lost. It's just if you have the relationship with the people at the property and the management company that's operating it, you just got to talk about it. And there are so many different opportunities and scenarios to work it all out. And um, sometimes it becomes contentious and it doesn't need to be. So that's just uh, so that that's what this is. And I think that knowledge and uh, sharing of knowledge and sharing of relationships and being collaborative versus competitive, that's been the only answer. So, yeah, you know, uh, you hit the nail right I, on the head. It's the knowledge and the collaboration. Yeah, that's what it is. And, you know, I would I would call a hotel general manager first if I ever had any question about uh, the the day to day operations. Yeah. And I would also ask them about the insurance policy because they know about that, too. They, they're they the ones that actually fill out the claims if somebody slips and falls on some ice. And so yeah. they're very aware of all this. It's just they're not usually a part of it three years before when the owner says, hey, I want to buy that piece of land. So, yeah, it's just a you know, it's a, it should be a family uh, affair. And I think that it, it could be going forward. So, well, all right, man, well, bro. we will, uh, we will, we'll end it here. We did it in 36 minutes, Three thirty-six. That's the area code for, uh, I think Greensboro, North Carolina. So, all right. Hashtag three, three, six. Good all stuff. Right, love you, bro. All right, we will, uh, we'll do it again next week. And thanks, everybody, for all your interaction. I got a bunch of comments over here, bro, I have to respond to. And I'm going to um, uh, respond probably either uh, on, on the LinkedIn live stream. So awesome. I'll, uh, I'll mention you. And uh, thanks, everybody. We'll yep. do it again thanks, next everybody. week.